Ohio judge resigns after chasing down woman at courthouse and jailing her. This comes from georgetakai.com, T-A-K-E-I. And let's just watch it. It's only a minute. Hey, get back here. That's a magistrate in full judicial robe storming out of his court. All right, I don't, I'm not going to use Inside Edition's um, speeches, but that magistrate judge stormed out of his courtroom after he heard the woman shouting in the hallway. She had been late to court. I think she was she was not allowed to file the things she needed to file. She lost her case or whatever, and she, she was mad, and she shouted something in the hallway. So he ran outside. And he gets her and he escorts her physically back into the courtroom. An attorney who regularly practices in the thing says, this, this doesn't happen. You don't do this. The judge can't make himself bailiff and sheriff and police officer and, uh, and juror and, um, and judge. He jailed her for three days for disruptive behavior she apparently found this quite ridiculous because she tried to flee. She ends up going to jail for two days before a different judge releases her. This magistrate judge was on the price is right. You know, that's that's that helps. I mean, <laughs> that somehow changes anyone's opinion on the judge, not mine. But the the judge, you can't do this. You can't do this. You simply can't. So if she acted out in his courtroom where he does have jurisdiction. Yeah, is that judge on bonk? <laughs> B-O-N-K. He's bonkers all right. If she acted up in his courtroom when she's within his court, he can have one of his bailiffs hold her. Then he can hold a hearing on whether she has committed a contemptible, jailable offense. And she has the right to present evidence and be represented by an attorney if she can't afford one, etc. Which it looks like none of that happened. So he has seriously violated her due process rights, it looks like. Let alone he's probably violated the law, as I don't believe the law supports jailing people for contempt of court for three days for having an outburst in the hallway. I didn't hear the outburst, though. Maybe it was a really, really bad outburst. But still, you don't do that. That's not your power as a judge. You have your staff do that. And only the right staff member, which has jurisdiction over the courthouse. What an idiot. He ate the crow a little too fast. <laughs> yeah, he ate the crow right away. Well, he was forced to resign. I don't think he had a choice about, about resigning. Even if he wanted to find her in contempt, he definitely ran out there and got her a little preemptively. Like, yeah, <laughs> could find out who, who she was, what she was there for, charge her with contempt when he's not in a heated emotional state. I mean, just a moment ago, you saw me fumble over my words and I took a moment to re to re to recollect myself and, and then I went on. If you just if you let yourself if you feed that anger and you just keep going into it you just stay flustered and he's a judge he should know that i mean he's been a judge long enough that he should know that meanwhile we have an update in a very very sad copyright story john deere continues to fight against the right to repair now it's a california lobbying group the california farm bureau which has agreed to a toothless version of right to repair. Basically, the farmers will lose their right to repair their tractors. They cannot reset immobilizer systems or other security-related electronic modules, even if they own the tractor. They cannot reprogram electronic control units or other engine control units, even if they own the tractor. Changing equipment or engine settings that affect emissions or safety compliance is forbidden. I kind of understand that one. That one's kind of okay. Or downloading or accessing any source code or proprietary embedded so software or code. Which at first sounds okay, but then how would you be able to make any mechanical changes to your tractor 
without the code that runs the tractor. However, the, the opposite end of this then is that manuals, product guides, product service demonstration, training seminars and clinics, fleet management info, onboard diagnostics via in-cab display or tele telematics, uh, electronic diagnostic servicing tools and training will all be made available to the California Farm Bureau and other publications with information on service parts operation and safety. But it sounds like if the onboard diagnostics says you have to have a John Deere technician repair this, that's it. You have to have a John Deere technician repair it. You don't get a choice. You don't, even if you can, you don't get a choice. And some people, me, Lewis, Gross, Lewis Rossman, excuse me, Lewis Rossman is a, uh, a, a huge advocate for the right to repair, bigger than me, I'm sure. I just said my name because I do advocate for that. I mean, come on, guys. I have a, I have a, a workbench here full of, of repair electronics on an amateur level. Like, we do this stuff. I, I recently um, repaired a tablet, uh, an NVIDIA Shield gra uh, tablet for technical bra. It needed a new battery. The old battery was all puffy and everything. I opened up the back. I, I ripped apart the battery, pulled out the battery management board, and resoldered a new battery onto the battery management board. Well, trust me, if the right to repair applied to stuff like that, there would be something that says no playing with lithium ion batteries because they're dangerous. And so I would have just violated that. I didn't because I have the right to repair, but the California Farm Bureau no longer has the right to repair past a certain point on their own John Deere tractors. Personally, I'd go buy a different tractor or I'd go buy one where I don't have to agree to that or I wouldn't be part of the California Farm Bureau. But honestly, if you're a businessman, if you're a farmer, you probably don't have those options. You probably need to go with what works best for you. And if there are restrictions, you have to decide whether the restrictions are too restrictive or not. And if you need to make money as a farmer, you have to go with it. I'll give you our example. I want to drop Adobe in the worst way. They have the absolute worst customer service I have ever experienced right up there with what I would expect I'd get from EA or Comcast. And actually, I did get better service from Comcast. I, I can't say that I ever had bad service from Comcast, bad service, but I had never had bad customer service from Comcast. Had bad internet service from Comcast, but never bad uh, customer service from Comcast. Of course, I was a Comcast customer after the whole Comcast customer service debacle. And they were on the, they were trying to improve. They were investing money in improving customer service at the time. But this is what I would expect from Comcast or EA or Bank of America. Not what I would expect from John Deere or, frankly, from the California Farm Bureau representing the farmers. I would not expect them to turn over these rights. So if you have a situation like I do with Adobe where you need something to work and you want to get rid of it, so you move over to Resolve and Fusion and they work 99.9% .9 of what you need, but you still know how to use Photoshop and Adobe PDFs are still the way to go. What am I going to do? Not spend $29.99 a month so I can have Photoshop and, and Adobe Acrobat? I really, really want to leave Adobe, but I've actually had to subscribe to more of their services because I had to hire a person and that person needed access too. So... I don't like that Adobe gets away with terrible customer service. And if I could do any, in fact, I've tried, I've, I've tweeted about it. I've written to Adobe and they give you the same thing as YouTube. They just reply with like the link to something and they don't reply with anything helpful. Heck, Adobe has even hung up on me and there has been no one to complain to. Their sales department hung up on me because I politely asked the person to stop trying to upsell me and just help me buy the one thing I already knew I needed. Instead, they were trying to upsell me for several minutes. No, 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 you should get the big package, the most expensive package with everything. But she just needs to do PDFs. No, 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 you need the big package with the everything. But she's just sending PDFs. No, 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 you need the big package. This was getting very frustrating. 
So finally, I told them to stop it and to, to put my order through, and they hung up on me. So Adobe is a horrible company, and if I could shut them down myself, I would. But uh, that's not how the world works, unfortunately. And it is possible enough to get too big to fail or whatever. I don't know. So that's why I'm concerned about California farmers not being able to repair their own tractors. Now, that's fine. They'll build the costs of the repairs into the price that you pay for your goods. So, in case you thought I wasn't talking about you, we are talking about you. You Amer Americans and even residents worldwide who purchase goods and services from California may see their costs going up. You know, I'm not saying there's going to be like an announcement, but they might see costs go up because... Well, one, the tariffs just, just went into effect. But two, the farmers can't repair their tractors themselves. They must get a John Deere technician when John Deere says so. It is no longer the judgment call of the, of the farmer. If the John Deere tractor says this is a John Deere problem, that's it. You get out of your tractor and go, go call John Deere. That's it. Or maybe, maybe they have an OnStar button. You can press like a, a call button right inside your tractor. My tractor broke. Send the expensive technician to fix it because I'm not allowed to. And I'm okay with John Deere trying to sustain their business model. That's okay. Like, I understand that they want to be the best service technicians for John Deere tractors. And I understand that if you want warranty service, you probably have to have it done by an authorized John Deere, whatever. But when it's out of warranty, who cares? I can repair my own stuff when it's out of warranty. I just repaired an NVIDIA Shield uh, tablet. I just repaired all by myself. Why should I have to go pay somebody to do that so that we can employ more service technicians? Well, it's definitely licensing their tractors. If you, if you don't own the tractor, then you have a license for it. And that's what it feels like. If I can't work on my car because you won't allow me to access the software settings or whatever, that sounds an awful lot to me, like I'm licensing the car from you, not an outright ownership of property. However, the reason why I, Leonard French, can't access my car's computer is because I don't have the right software in the computer. I haven't actually tried. I might be able to find a cracked version of the software or whatever, and then go do it. And if I did that, it would be perfectly legal. If I sold the software, though, that would be a a distribution of a device that circumvents technological protection measures under copyright law and would be a violation of DMCA section 1200 something, 1201, etc. They could be leasing their tractors under and the tractors are under warranty and all, but I'm assuming this is also for owned tractors. This is also for owned tractors that are out of warranty. But I don't, I don't know more than that. So it's an interesting problem to have come up yet again. John Deere's been in court for this before, a while ago. All right, everyone, that's our show. Thank you very much for joining me. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. Thank you very much to all of our supporters, especially to our supporters on patreon.com slash ljfrench. In September, our $50 plus supporters are Jonathan Doe, John Steele, Gavin Barnard, Evie, Andy, Kyle Mudrock, Vera Mentain, Sean McNamara, William Gonzalez, Michael Pierce, Grunkle Tia Marie, Terry Crisp, Richard Fortier, and Michael Jones. And thank you very much to the 200 plus $5 plus supporters scrolling on the LED panel behind me somewhere back there. There you go. And on the crawl of the videos on demand that drop. And next week, we'll get to the tree that owns itself and the Ninth Circuit students that were arrested so the officer could prove a point. I am Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney, and I will see you later. <laughs>